but there are still these great questions to be answered. And you're looking at the zebras, and they're all unique, and yet all of these creatures are just so much complexity and diversity. How does the, the standard story, the conventional paradigm, explain all of that? Well, they would use evolution, right? So millions of years, random variations, all things that are alive now, that cactus, that zebra, the grass here, it's all related. We all go back to a common ancestor that lived billions of years ago. And through the process of mutation and genetic variation uh, and natural selection, that's where we get the stuff that we have today. But doesn't that imply that all of those mutations are positive? They're all moving towards all of this diversity that we have? Well, there certainly has to be a lot of beneficial mutations. There could be bad stuff. I mean, that's what natural selection is going to get rid of, because natural selection is basically killing off the stuff that's not fit to survive. So anything that bad that crops up is going to be presumably eliminated by natural selection. Uh, so there can be bad mutations in the conventional model. But yeah, you've got to have good mutations, too, to make the variety of things that we see. You've got to have a lot of really good stuff that happens in the history of mutation. Mm -hmm. Does that seem reasonable? Well, that's a good question. I mean, from what we can see in genomes today, we can see, yeah, I mean, there's some mutations that might be helpful in some circumstances. Other mutations are probably not so good. But the vast majority of them, they don't do anything. They're just useless. 